New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Come, let us adore the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We thank you for joining us on this morning, and we pray that you click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. If you listened to Brother Ewell Miles on this morning, you know that he gave a pop quiz. Well, as I was getting my little speech together last night, I decided to give a test this morning as well. So I want you to take my test, and we're going to see whether or not you are blessed. Okay, this is the test. I need everyone to take a deep breath. Now exhale. Let's do it again. Take another deep breath. Now exhale. Okay, it's time for me to see whether or not you passed the breath, uh, the blessed test. If you were able to breathe in, and exhale out, you are tremendously blessed. You pass the test. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not blessed. In fact, we all are blessed just to be alive on this day, December 20th, 2020, after so many have lost their lives to COVID-19. We are also blessed because God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to be born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus Christ was born in this world so he could die. Yes, that was his purpose for coming. Our scripture in Matthew 2 verses 9b through 11 from the New Living Translation says, And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave him expensive gifts, y'all. In these verses, the wise men sought Jesus. They brought him gifts and they worshiped Jesus for who he was. This is the essence of true worship honoring God for who he is and being willing to give him what is valuable to us. We worship God because he is perfect. God is just and he is the almighty creator of the universe. God is worthy of the best we can give. So come let us adore him. Lord of Lord and King of Kings.
Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ, we come. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. God, we thank you for just blessing us this morning to see another Lord's Day. God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do, and what you're doing right now. God, we honor you. We praise you. We lift you and we magnify you. For you are good and you are God. Now, Father God, we pray that you bless us on this morning. First of all, by forgiving us for our sins. Lord, forgive us for messing up what we knew we were messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for not doing those things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us through your word, that your word will be real to us, and that we, Father God, will be obedient to your word. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Thank the Lord <clears throat> for another Lord's Day. It is the Sunday right before Christmas. It is the Sunday before Christ's high day. Uh, and it's the Sunday before uh, the day that we recognize of Christ's birth. I want to call your attention to Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11. As in the book of Matthew in the New Testament, the chapters 2 and the verse is number 11. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11. Just one verse, as we have, have seen year after year, we deal with this new birth experience through the physical birth of Jesus Christ. And we want to deal with that new birth experience on today through the physical birth of Jesus Christ one more time. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11. I'm reading from the New King James Version. When you found it, you will discover these words. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I want to talk about a Christmas worth celebrating. A Christmas worth celebrating. Even though we have reported several deaths from the coronavirus, we find ourselves at the brink of a Christmas. And it must be a Christmas that we deem worthy of celebrating. Cases are rising throughout our nation as well as throughout our world. But as Sister Davis has given you the test this morning, if you're still living, you're still breathing, Amen. you are blessed. Amen. And because you are blessed, you are in the midst of a time, a Christmas time, that's worth celebrating. Yes, yeah, we ought to celebrate. Uh, we have different means of celebration this year. And we must celebrate like never before. It's different this year. We can't call all our family members over. Ask them to come and let's celebrate together. We can't go down the street and play and have fun with our family members and friends like we usually do. Because the virus is very, very real. Yes, Lord. This virus is so real until it's taken at least a few family members from every family. Either we have fallen victim of this virus through sickness, mm -hmm. or we've fallen victim of this virus through the death of a family member. Mm -hmm. But Christmas mm -hmm. must still 
be celebrated. Amen. When we look at Houston alone, as of December 18th, the report says that over 170, over 107 cases have been logged in in the Houston area alone. 107,000 cases has been logged in in Houston alone. Over 1,500 deaths to the date has been logged in as those who have died from COVID-19. The good news is over 95,000 people have recovered from this awful disease. I want to tell you, we still got a reason to celebrate Christmas. Amen. In Harris County alone, in Harris County alone, we find over a thousand cases just this week. What, said, what it says to us that 10% of Houstonians mm -hmm. have been tested positive for this dreadful virus. I want to tell you this morning, it is devastating to all of us, but we still have reasons to celebrate. We ought to celebrate the start of a vaccine. God and God alone has given man wisdom. And it's regardless of what side of the fence you own, whether you will take it or won't take it, mm -hmm. We still have reasons <laughs> to celebrate Christmas. I su suggest to you today that the Bible gives us the ultimate reason yes, why we ought to celebrate. You see, first of all, this word Christmas begins with Christ. It's not flowers. It's not pretty things. The word Christmas begins with Christ. I want to tell you this morning, if you're going to have a Christmas worth celebrating, mm -hmm. you must let your Christmas and make sure your Christmas begin with Christ. Christ ought to be the main attraction. Christ ought to be number one on your agenda. Christ ought to be the first person you speak to in the morning. If you're going to celebrate Christmas, it won't be through Santa Claus. It won't be a lofty man trying to squeeze his way down through a small chimney hole. If you're going to celebrate Christmas, and we do have a Christmas worth celebrating, yeah. if you're going to celebrate Christmas, you're going to have to do it by remembering and holding dear to Christ. Yes, yes it's, it's Christ at the beginning of Christmas. It's Christ throughout the year. It's Christ uh, at the end of Christmas. We need to know that we need more Christ in order to have a successful celebration of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Christmas is not about family meals. It's, it's not, and these things we ought to do, except this year. It's not about toys and pretty things. It's, it's not about lying to your children about who brought them. It's not about leaving cookies on the table for a stranger you don't know. If we're going to really help our children to celebrate Christmas in a godly way, we got to keep Christ in Christmas. Amen. The text that I read has been read and taught and preached many times before. As a matter of fact, from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we celebrate Christmas every year by using these texts to explain to people that Christ is the reason for Christmas. I want to say to you today that God's word is still relevant. 
God's word is still accurate. God's word is still true. We need to make sure that Christmas is not overshadowed and Christ is not overshadowed by engagement rings, by wedding ceremonies, by family members getting together and bringing two families together to walk together as one. We need to make sure that we keep Christ in Christmas. Our children need to know the truth. They need to know that without Christ, there is no Christmas. It's not about new clothes, new shoes. It's, it's not about new ties, new outfit or wardrobes. It's not even about new food. It's not about, it's not about whether we're going to eat chicken or pork or beef or, or whether we're going to, to eat turkey during this season. Christmas is strictly about Christ. Well, that's what the Magi did. The Magi in the text, in Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11, the Magi had traveled afar, and they came to this house. They passed many other houses, but they came to the house where Jesus was residing. By now, Jesus is, is born. By now, Jesus is is no longer in a manger. Let me park here and tell you, we got to stop seeing Jesus as the baby Jesus and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of songwriters talk about he's the baby Jesus, and yes, he was the baby Jesus, but in the text, he wasn't baby Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. Theologians believe that, that he was a toddler. They believe that he was around the age of two to five years old. They Many are split on how old he were, but all agree that he was no longer the baby laid in the manger. Brother Miles did a great job in Sunday school this morning by, by letting us know that, that our messages that we paint with the baby Jesus in the manger and the wise man coming to surround him with gifts. He made a good statement. He made it clear this morning that the baby Jesus wasn't in the manger when the Magi, Magi arrived. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure our children get the message straight. We need to make sure that they understand that, yes, the Virgin Mary gave birth. Yes, the Virgin Mary that had not known a man gave birth to the baby Jesus. Yes, they took the baby Jesus and they, they wrapped him in strips of cloth. They wrapped Jesus in swaddle, swaddling cloth. They, they laid Jesus. Yes, they, made, they laid Jesus in a manger. And after they made G, laid Jesus in the manger, we need to understand he didn't stay there. <laughs> the writing that we're reading on today indicates to us that when the wise men, when the magi got to baby Jesus... <laughs> as we would call him, baby Jesus. When the wise man got to Jesus, he was a child, he was no longer a baby. Yes. When the wise man got to Jesus, he was still a young child. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, and when they, the, the they is the magi. Mm -hmm. The word magi is a poor word, and this word means much of a crowd or a gang of people or an entourage, it's not specific to only three men. You see, the text doesn't tell us how many men there were. It doesn't tell us how many wise fellows showed up. But what it does tell us, that they did bring forth at least three gifts. Yes. Yeah. Many times we paint the picture of the Magi being... <laughs> Three men when we really don't know how many. But the Bible does specify at least three gifts. The Bible discusses with us that the wise men were determined to get to Jesus. And I want to tell you this morning, wise men still seek Jesus. If you think you're wise, you ought to be seeking Jesus. If, if you say you're wise, I know you are when you're seeking Jesus. 
The wise men came from afar. Theologians believe some 75 to 100 miles. They, they came to find the young child in the house. You know, Mary and Joseph was no longer in the stable. <laughs> they were in the house. <laughs> It says to us this morning that, that we ought to be able to progress from one per point to the other. Our mental state ought to go from one point to the other. Our physical state ought to go from one point to the other. We ought to be able to advance on our jobs. We ought to be able to advance in our communities. So Mary and Joseph had left the stable. Matter of fact, they had left the stable and went in hiding because King Herod wanted to kill the baby. I want to tell you today, Herod is not dead. He's still alive. Oh, and he still wants to kill those who are successful for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Herod is still alive. He still wants to, to mutilate those who he is intimidated by. What kind of self-esteem does a king have? Mm -hmm. A king who is afraid of a baby being born. Yikes. A king who had such low self-esteem until he will kill the baby mm -hmm. in order to keep his kingdom. Right. Well, don't you know that Jesus didn't come to take Herod's kingdom for he is the king of kings himself? He is the king of kings. He is the one that makes things right with us in God. This young child was found in a house. He grew like any other child would grow. He didn't stay a baby. If he had stayed a baby, we would have serious problems. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with his mother, Mary. I tell you, they saw the young child. They saw the young child with his mother, Mary. They saw him. I want to tell you, if your life is going to be any better than what it was in 2020, mm -hmm. and you can't blame it, everything on the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. If your life is going to be different, if your life is going to be successful, you're going to have to follow the star that leads to Jesus. Amen. The Bible says they saw Jesus. We must see Jesus for who he is. We must see Jesus for ourselves. The text declares that they saw Jesus. You see, Jesus was the center of attention. Jesus was the main attraction. Jesus was the reason they were there. The text doesn't say they saw, they came to see Mary, they happened to see Mary. They didn't show up to see Mary, they showed up to see Mary's baby. They showed up to see Mary's young boy. They showed up to see Mary's child. Let me just stop and let you know, you need to see Jesus, not Mary. Mary is a good woman. Mary was, was used by God. Mary was an instrument by which God used to bring Jesus on the scene. But you're not really concerned, are you, about seeing Mary? You're not concerned about seeing Joseph. You ought to look to see Jesus. They saw Jesus. Because they sought for him. We must continue to seek Jesus and find him for ourselves. I say to those who are not saved this morning, those who are not sure of their salvation, you need to see Jesus. You need to see Jesus. You need to see Jesus. When the preacher stands, you ought to have in your mind, preacher, point us to Jesus. When the teacher teaches, the teacher ought to make sure that he or she leads his or her students to Jesus. Amen. Back home, they say to the young preachers that if you have not covered Jesus, you just gave a good speak, you have not preached. So we, we have come to see Jesus. Hmm. We go to church to see 
Jesus. You tune in on this broadcast so you can see Jesus. And that's why it's imperative for preachers to raise their voice, not for any shape, form, or fashion, that men, but because men need to see Jesus. You see, my preaching would be in vain. My, my instructions would be in vain. My, my gospel teaching would be in vain unless I point men to Jesus. We need to look to see Jesus. The Bible says, I'm still in Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. Matthew's gospel record that he was with Mary, his mother. It's a point that is to be made here that when children are young, they ought to be with their mother. Uh uh. The point to be made is that we can't let children run rapid and let them make their own decisions. When children are young, they need instructions from their mother. The Bible says that they, the Bible says, Matthew declares that, that they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. It goes on to talk about the fact that not only did they see the young child, but the new King James Version said they fell down. The word fell down means they bowed down. They prostrated themselves before a young child. Can you see the image? Can you see the situation? Can you see four grown men falling prostrate flat on their stomachs. These four grown men have traveled some 70 to 100 miles. Four grown men, wise men, don't mind humbling themselves before Jesus. Let me just tell you, they, they fell down, they bowed down, they, they fell down before Jesus. Wise men still seek Jesus. Wise men still looking for Jesus. Wise men do not mind bowing down, falling prostrate before Jesus the Savior. Doesn't even look right. It doesn't even sound right. It doesn't, it doesn't even appear right that grown men will fall down before a child, a little child. They fell down. They, they bowed down. They prostrated themselves. They became horizontal. Before Jesus. When you see Jesus, you must put yourself on the back burner. Mm. When you see Jesus, you must humble yourself before the king. When you see Jesus, your posture must be one that will cause you to submit to the conquering king of Calvary. Grown men ought to submit to Jesus. The reason why we have such turmoil in our nation, such turmoil in our homes, is because grown men won't bow down before Jesus. Because if grown men would bow down before Jesus, then Jesus can lead us, Jesus can be our king, and we will follow him. I know, I know, I know, I understand, I understand even today as we speak. Until January the 20th, there's one who wants to be a king. There is one who wants you to serve him as you would serve a king. But January 20th is coming. And when January 20th is coming, then he will recognize that he's not a king and he will not ever be a king because Jesus, the conquering king of Calvary, is here. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you about a Christmas <laughs> we ought to celebrate. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, verse number, verse number 11, Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11, it says, these men fell down. These men laid prostrate. These men worshiped him. Verse number 11 says, they fell down 
and they worshiped him. It's not enough to bow down. It's not enough to fall prostrate. It's not enough to recognize and see Jesus. We must come to the point in our lives where we are willing to worship him. We, we, we got to worship him. We, we got to worship him. We, we must praise him. We must honor him. You see, we ought to find Jesus as the object of our worship. Yes. We ought to aim at Jesus with our worship. We ought to aim at Jesus with our prayers. That's why when we pray, we say, in the name of Jesus. Because we know unless we go through Jesus, we can't get to the Father. Unless we go through Jesus, we can't reach heaven. Unless we go through Jesus, our prayers cannot be answered. So we have to worship, honor, and obey him. We, we worship him. See, some people think that worshiping is doing our little dance. Some people think that worshiping is, is when we raise our voices and say hallelujah. These things we must do, but we must live the life before people in order to worship him. Yes. Yeah, Pastor Johnson, the late Pastor Manson Johnson used to say, you ought not just have hallelujah, you ought to have some dooly <laughs> You ought to be willing, you ought to be willing to worship God in the spirit of truth. We ought to worship him in the building, and now that we're not in the building, we ought to worship him in the household. Our children ought to see us worshiping him. Our, our friends and our neighbors ought to know that we worship him. We ought to have a quiet place in our house where we go all by ourselves to bow our head and even at times fall prostrate before him and worship him. He's worthy of worship. He's worthy of praise. If you've been sick, let me tell you, and he made you well because he's a great God, Jehovah Rapha. Let me tell you, he's worthy of your worship. Amen. Doctors can do so much. Many times doctors roll up their silverware, put it in the napkin and say, take them home. I've done all I can do with them. And those same doctors have to come back and say it was nothing but God on your side. Yes, right. And for that, we ought to worship him. Some of us have been broke, broker than Job's turkey. Some of us have been laid off. Some of us have been hungry, but God saw fit yes, right. to keep right on blessing us yes. in spite of our meanness, in spite of our condition. God keeps right on blessing us. And let me just share with you, it's because of his blessing, we ought to worship him. Yes. Bible says that the Magi, this entourage, this gang of grown men, this, this, these men got together and they worshipped him. <clears throat> they, they, they came to worship him. The text doesn't say they had a meeting to decide whether they're going to worship him. I can see the picture now. Not one man was standing. Mm -hmm. The Bible said they bowed down and worshipped him. They came to this little child and they bowed down and worshiped him. And then they opened up their treasures. Uh-uh, they opened up their treasures. They opened their treasures. They, they went into their treasures. Now, when there's a treasure, first of all, that means that something is rare. You see, the pirates used to, used to attack ships to take treasure. And when they took treasure, they didn't take just any old thing. They took those things that were rare. When men swim down into the deep and they find a treasure chest with treasure in it, it's because those treasures are rare. And not only are those treasures rare, they are expensive. First of all, they're rare because everybody can't get it. They're rare because everybody don't have it. They're rare because you don't see it every day. So these treasures, whenever you see the word treasures, it simply means that this is a rare commodity. And secondly, it means it was expensive. And thirdly, it's fit for a certain group of people. Ah, <laughs> oh, you don't hear me here today. First of all, they are rare 
Secondly, they are expensive. And thirdly, it is fit only for a certain group of people. And in this case, these treasures were only fit for Jesus. Amen. They were only fit for Jesus. Nobody, no man anywhere deserved these treasures like Jesus deserved them. Look at the text. It talks about the fact that they opened their treasures. Mm -hmm. You see, Christmas is not about racing to the tree on Christmas morning. Christmas is not about running to the tree to see what you have. Christmas is about honoring the conquering king of Calvary. Amen. Christmas is about honoring Jesus the Christ, making sure our children know why we celebrate this great holy day. So they, they took out their treasures. They, they opened their treasures. They, they, they unboxed their treasures. Treasures are expensive. Treasures are rare. And treasures are only fit for a certain group of people. First of all, they opened and they presented gifts to him. The text doesn't say he, they presented gifts to them. Now, after this verse, after they presented their treasure, theologians don't have an answer as to what happened to them afterwards. But the fact of the matter is, they didn't present them to Mary. They didn't present them to Joseph. They didn't present to the people that were watching. They presented their treasures to Jesus the Christ. Let me just share with you. You stop giving your treasures to any and everybody. Don't, don't, young ladies, don't give your treasures to any and everybody. Young men, don't give your treasures to any and everybody. Make sure when you give per a person your treasures, they deserve your treasures. <laughs> Make sure you give the right treasures to the right person. Many friends have fallen out because of treasures. Many neighbors, many family members have, have taken off and gone off on a total discord because somebody misused their treasures. My fourth point to you today is if you give your treasures to Jesus, he won't misuse your treasures. Give it to him. You see, men will misuse your treasures, but Jesus will not misuse your treasures. The Bible says they opened up their treasures and they presented gifts to him. It suggests that they had other treasures. It suggests, the text suggests that they opened up their treasures and as they opened up their treasures, they distinctively pulled out three of them. That's what it says. It says, it says first of all, they pulled out gold. Gold as it is today, gold was a symbol of wealth. Only rich folk had gold. My question to you today is, you got some gold in your house? <laughs> Where is your gold? They pulled out gold. They, they pulled out gold because gold not only represents wealth, gold also represents power. Gold represents power. They understood that the person they were standing before, even though he was a little boy, he represents power. That's right. Isaiah says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son, a son is born, a child is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. He represents power. So gold, gold represents wealth. The gold rep represents power and gold represents status. The same Jesus that was born didn't have a place to stay, didn't have a hotel and didn't even have a motel. The Bible says he didn't have an inn in which they would lay him. The same Jesus that they laid in a stall, the same Jesus they put in a hog trough, the same Jesus they wrapped in swaddling strips, the same Jesus came with power. He came with status and he came with wealth. Amen. So they gave him gold. Then the text says they gave him frankincense. 
frankincense was an incense. I remember back in the 70s and the 80s, people, you would walk in people's houses and they would, they would have incense either sitting around or, or they would have them coming off a little, little stick and, and the incense would burn and, and, and send off a great flavor and a great savor, a great smell. The, the Bible says that, that they gave him frankincense this frankincense was an incense that set off a great smell. This frankincense, this frankincense was, 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 a, was a representation of what people would do when they understand that they're in the presence of royalty. This gold represents royalty and this frankincense represents deity. This frankincense was a smell. I, I went to a Catholic funeral and, and they had a, a canister that they let off a, a frankincense with. They let off a, a, an incense with. The smell to me didn't, wasn't very nice. It choked me up. But I guarantee you, when they brought their frankincense to Jesus, it was a blessing for them to give. And it was a blessing for Jesus to receive. The third thing they brought was myrrh. See, myrrh was, was something that they got from a gum. And they used this anointing gum and they squeezed it out to anoint a person. And it is, it is most commonly used during these days. It was most commonly used to bury the dead. This myrrh was a spice that, that, that they lay off. To, to, it was such as of an embalming fluid. And let me tell you, if you go to your undertaker today, it costs a lot of money to get embalmed. And it, they gave him myrrh. And there was a symbol. All three of these were symbols of things that were and things that were to come. They gave him gold because he was royal. They gave him gold because his, his sacrifice was expensive. They gave him frankincense because they, it, it sets off a good smelling aroma. And then they gave him myrrh because not only was the baby born, but he had to die. This, this myrrh represents, and this myrrh speaks to us today and let us know not only was the baby laid in a manger, not only was the baby in a house, but the baby was also on a cross. The Bible said these men showed up, they saw Jesus, they bowed before Jesus, they worshiped Jesus, they gave Jesus gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when they gave Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the myrrh stands out because it was a preparation for Jesus' death. Yeah, they met Jesus then, but, but they even prophesied through their gifts that Jesus was going to die. If you're going to have a good Christmas, if you're going to have a Christmas worth, worth celebrating, you need to bring your gifts to Jesus. You need to open up your treasures, open up your heart, open up your pocketbook, and bring it to Jesus. Yes. You got, you got, if you're going to celebrate Christmas, you, you can't go buy everything, everybody something but Jesus. You can't contribute to everybody other than Jesus. You have to celebrate Jesus' birthday as he is the King of King and Lord of Lord. Amen. Have you ever been invited to your own birthday party and you show up and everybody in there getting a gift but you? Mm -hmm. December 25th may not be the day that Jesus was born, but it's the day we celebrate. Right. I remember for 70 years, we celebrated my daddy, my daddy's birthday on November 6th. For 70 years, we celebrated his birthday for 70 years on November 6th, only to find out 70 years later his birthday was really on November 5th. You see, because when he was born, he, when he was born in 1940, the, 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 house, the, the, the midwives made mistake on the paperwork. And that paperwork would always go to be your birth certificate, but they really don't know what day of the week it was. They didn't really know what date of the month it was. And so we just rolled with it for 70 years. Let me just say to you today, 
that Jesus Christ was born. We don't really know the day he was born on. But the good news is he was born by a virgin called Mary. The good news is the same Jesus that was born by a virgin called Mary, that same Jesus was a boy in the text, and men saw him, men worshiped him, men bowed down before him, and they opened their treasures and gave out their gifts. Mm -hmm. And this is a good point right here to talk about tithes and offering, but I'll let you have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is a good point to, to let you know that you ought to be opening up your gift for Jesus and not opening up your gift for other people. But the problem is we, we give, we go out of our way, we spend money we don't have for people who don't like us, for people who talk about us, and people we don't even like. And we waste our money giving gifts in order for them to re-gift it to somebody else. But when you talk about Jesus, yes. you better bring your very best. Mm -hmm. Give it your very, very best because God gave his very best over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they gave myrrh. They gave myrrh because the same baby that was born was the same man that was going to be killed. And they were going to need the spice in order to, to anoint his body. Yeah, they did. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you and he died for me. If you're, if you're not on your way to heaven, you can, you can qualify today. Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah, it was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that Thursday morning, third, third day morning, he rose from the dead. And he rose, and, and it's right here in the text. He rose, he rose when, he, when they gave him gold. They, they gave a symbol to say that they given him power because he rose with all power. God gave him all power. Man didn't give him power. He rose, and when he rose, it was a great incense that went before the world because the devil thought they had him. They gave him frankincense. The devil thought they had him. But, 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 but early that third day morning, he rose with all power from the dead. Yes, they gave him murder. They gave him murder because he had to die. If Jesus had not died, I could not live. If Jesus had not died, you could not live. Thank God for Jesus. And because he died on a skull hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago, now I live. Yes. Not only do I live, he lives in me. Not only do I live, he yet lives. Jesus lives within us. If we're going to celebrate Christmas, we have the right to celebrate him if we've accepted him. Don't you go into Christmas this year yes. without having the right to celebrate Christ. And you can have the right right here, right now, today. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus just as you are. You can get to know Jesus for yourself. You can get to know Jesus in the departing of your sin. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You need to get to know Jesus. You can't really celebrate Christmas without Christ. And yes, this is a Christmas we must celebrate. In the face of 170, 107,000 people locally who have been contra who has contracted the virus in the midst of over a thousand people in the city of Houston already dead in the midst of 10% of the population of Houston, Texas have been diagnosed with COVID-19 you can still celebrate Christmas this is a Christmas you ought to celebrate you can only do that if you're born again. You can only do that if Jesus is Lord of your life. You can only do that if Jesus is your Savior. I offer Jesus to you today. This is a good moment to get to know him. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. This Jesus that was born and they laid him in a manger. It's Jesus that, that they killed on an old rugged cross on a skull hill called Calvary. 
This Jesus that rose from the dead with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. You can get to know him today. And you can invite him into your heart. Please just repeat after me and invite Christ into your heart. Let me pray with you and you pray with me. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank you. Now, if you prayed that prayer believing that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, we believe that you're born again. We believe that you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you're saved. And there are some things going on during this year, especially this season. There's loneliness. There's Anxiety. I want to pray with you and pray for you. That God will lift every burden. There's sickness. There's pain. There are struggles. And many of us are seeing struggles like never before. I want to pray with you and ask God to lift every burden. That God will give you freedom to celebrate that God will show you a reason to celebrate Christmas. This is a Christmas worthy of the celebration. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for every listener. We thank you for every person that will tune in. We ask you, Father, to lift every burden. Relieve them of all pain. Relieve them of suffering. Bless them, Father God, to depend on you. And Lord, I ask you to answer their prayer. Give them relief. Show them hope. And give them strength. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. We just thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank the Lord. When we thank God for who he is and what he has already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. We're praying for Sister Carol Dixon. We're praying for Sister Carol Dixon, who has been sick for a long time, and we're lifting her before the Lord, lifting her family. Before the Lord, we thank God that he is still in the blessing business. We are constantly praying. We ask God to bless and to keep. Amen. Thank God. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And you can give one of three ways. You can give to the Lord in one of three ways here at the New Beginning Church. You can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls is our cash app. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zelle. Is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your tithes and your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 
77459. And as this is the season of giving back to Jesus, as I've just preached before you, I'm asking you to use this period between December 20 today and December 31st to give Jesus a birthday gift as we do every Sunday uh, right before Christmas at our church. I want you to take the time between today and December 31st and give Jesus a birthday gift and you can do so by doing by presenting your offering to either Cash App, Zelle, or P.O. Box. Go ahead and give Jesus a birthday gift uh, this season. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday school class every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Thank you for joining us for Sunday school. And also, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today as we worship here, as we do every Sunday morning. And I'm asking you also to continue to watch us and be with us and fellowship with us every Wednesday at 920, every Wednesday at 920 p.m. For, 720. At 720 p.m. Every Wednesday at 720 p.m. Every Wednesday at 720 p.m. For our Bible study, both on Facebook Live as well as on our Zoom station. Thank you so much. Also, I want to, to give you a few other announcements. Um, I start with the one that, that some people shout on, but I don't. Uh, first of all, we, we will not have Bible study on December 30th. We will have Bible study this Wednesday, but we will not have Bible study on December 30th. So please place in your calendar, we will not have Bible study on December 30th. We will not have Bible study on December 30th. However, because God has so graciously blessed us again, December 5th, 25th at 1045, we will have a short message and communion. On December 25th, that's, uh, that's, that's Christmas morning, December 25th at 1045, we will have a very brief message and we will have communion celebrating the, the birth of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. We'll be celebrating Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection on December 25th. Very short, brief message, Facebook Live as well as Zoom, uh, and we will have communion. So get your communion out on December 25th. Also, uh, we usually have a, a late night watch party on December 31st. December 31st, we will have a watch night beginning at 8 p.m. and ending at 9 p.m. on Facebook Live will be virtual uh, and as well as Zoom. So our celebration to end out the year and to welcome in the new year will be will be at 8 p.m. and ending at 9 p.m. unless y'all just get so happy. And that night we will also have communion. We will have communion that night. Uh, we will have communion to celebrate what God has done and how he has blessed us to make it over. Hallelujah. If I'm not here, somebody else will serve me. But <laughs> you know, God has blessed us. If God has blessed you to make through 2020, <laughs> you ought to give him a celebration. You ought, to, you ought to worship him. You ought to have communion with him. So again, we're having communion on, on watch night, which is December 30th. From 8 to 9, we'll have a watch night service. During that watch night service, I want you to post by, if you're on Zoom, I want you to put in your chat how God has blessed you during 2020. If you're on Facebook Live, I want you to talk about how God has blessed you. And I'm going to try to read it as it strolls up, how, how God, what God has done specially for you during 2020. I believe that God has done something special for all of us in the year of 2020. So our watch night service will be one of testimony. You can put in the chat if you're on Zoom. You can put it in on Facebook Live Messenger and let, let us know how God has continued to bless us. And we will also have communion that night and we want to glorify God for what he has done. Let me just share with you. If you don't have a reason to glorify God in 2020, you probably ought to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> Uh, if you don't have a reason, you need to have a reason 
to glorify God. And I know many of you, all of us have reasons to glorify God. Just because we didn't walk past the wrong person and get breathed upon, that's enough right there uh, to glorify God. So please, ma'am, please, sir, let's commune together. No Bible study on on um, December 30th. We will have um, a short message on December 25th at 10.45 a.m., Christmas Day. And that also we will have communion. And then watch night, which is... Um, the 31st of December, we will have communion as well as testimony service uh, by way of virtual platforms. So please, ma'am, please, sir, let's celebrate God. Let's, let's be in, in good time with him. Don't forget to send uh, your love offering in to Jesus for Jesus' birthday. You can do it by Zelle. You can do it by Cash App, or you can do it uh, by way of P.O. Box. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for being a part of our service. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. We at the New Beginning Church, we are strengthening families, supporting schools, and powering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we come lifting up Sister Carol Dixon. We ask you to bless, heal, strengthen. Bless her, Father God, that she will walk with you. Bless her, Lord, that she will feel your presence. Heal her body and strengthen her, Father God. Bless her, Lord, that she will see you for who you are. Now, Lord, we ask you to amaze the doctors. Heal her body. Give her hope and give her strength. Bless her family and bless them to forever be grateful for what you are going to do. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together threefoldly. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank God and we bless God for what he has already done. And he has done great things. God bless you.